metropolitan places and you know mostly towards north and a pilot towards south so that we can test both of them. Uh, the reason one is in the north, most of them favor tandoori chicken, right? If you look at the Indian map, you find tandoori chicken everywhere in every state, right? So we thought we'll start from there and move down. Next slide, please. So this is about the foreign direct investments. How do we really look at how the, how the fabric looks like? If you look at this, closer to $500 billion is what is the food and retail sector we've got, of which 5% is food services, right? And if you talk about the market attractiveness, where does India stand with other countries is what this slide represents. The source of this slide is routers, right? When you look at market attractiveness, right? It's not that attractive when compared to this. The country risk, of course, it's less. Probably it's attractive there. Market saturation, market saturation is not achieved. The huge markets go down there, right? So how do, how do we really adjust, adjust to this and adapt to this is what is the triangle which we are talking about for us to get there. Manage the floating, the exchange rate which we have, the RBI controlled monetary policy, and the basic foundations which we need to look into. And increasingly open capital flows is one thing which is very attractive, which we can leverage on. Go to the next slide, please. Now, this reminds this slide reminds me of size matters, which we have, you know, probably in our last class which we looked into. So in terms of size, what do you think is US when compared to India? Three times three bigger. bigger? Three times or four times bigger, right? But in, in, in terms of size in a different metric, in population, what is it? India is one Right? India is, is what? How many times bigger? Three times. Four times. Four times bigger, right? So India is $1.2 billion. US is close to around 350 or whatever. Um, Grand main professor, right? 350 million, right? If you just talk about the middle class in India, which is close to around 30%, is what constitutes entire US population. That's the potential we have, right? We were just looking at, just looking at the consistent strengths which, which can really translate out and, and transform the entire business from US to India, are kind of you know, financial stability, one of the biggest democracies in the world, financial stability is there, there's available capital. There's enough available capital. Western deficiency is awesome. Right? When we talk about the opportunities, forgive my numbers there, it was actually different. So is it a marketable cuisine? Yes, it is. Right? So we can adapt our menus to the cuisine, and then we're good with it. Brand, I think pretty much everybody knows about Chipotle, at least the educated folks know about it. At least the upper middle class and the and the moving class know about it. And the business acumen has been proven already. Chipotle has been other dimensions of the world, other geographies of the world, and we've seen a good chapter. Go to the next slide. <coughs> this is the failure modes and effects analysis which I've done here to find out which are those failure modes which are critical low, medium, high, and what would be the impact of that particular failure mode, right? And how do they really mitigate it? So if I look at this chart, one of the medium risks is what, you know, I found out was the political risk which we have. We put it to medium, it would have been higher rather than the political changing, changing political scenarios in India. So if we talk about that, so how do we really mitigate that local governance, the corruption which is which is already now there, and you know unfair treatment or you know all kinds of business ethic, business ethic problems and all. So we thought that could be done by diversifying ourselves into different states, having a strong JV partners, probably just like Tata or Reliance. Tata is more reliable. People connect with Tata, Tata Teas, and you know, Tata brand, it's highly reputable. But Tata would be a good way for us to go ahead and talk about right? Talk about socio-cultural differences, right? Which we have already talked about a lot. The beef and the pork and, and, and all that, you know, the religion stuff and all those stuff. That could be handled by having <coughs> appropriate menus for, uh, in our world. And 
I don't want to go about all of them. Currency is one of them which we've already talked about, and the legal implications again, again, it's kind of you know mitigated by having a joint venture, a strong joint venture partner. Going to the next slide, what do you perceive of this? Which do you think is Indian cuisine, and which do you think is the Mexican cuisine? So how many right? And Indian is left. You agree? All of you guys? Yeah. That's correct. So actually, it's like, you know, Shruti was talking, we were talking about, discussing about it. If you just take that tortilla, that's that's called uh, naan or chapati or something of that sort, put the rice into it, it becomes this. <laughs> right? Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Any questions? <laughs> One thought, um, nothing questionable about your project yeah. will work or not. Um, just curious uh, to know how many of you guys think this would work in India. See, I would, I would like to answer it in a different way. I would love to have it work, but I, there are a lot of things to, to be taken care of. Even now, in, in you know deep down south where I come from, you know I come from Hyderabad. You get a meal, a full meal, right? A full meal for a dollar. I know. Right? Know. For a dollar. So pricing strategy would be one of the most yeah, important that's, that's strategies. One challenge for sure. Yeah, um, obviously, but the, the the raw materials and all that, all of that are kind of you know you can arbitrage, right? Correct. You can you can send it from India to US or any other parts of the country, they want beans or rice or whatever quality they want, right? There's some arbitrary opportunity out there, but that's not a good I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not thinking about uh, the Chipotle chain itself, I'm just thinking about opening this in local, locally. Wow. Actually, I had the discussion with him just before the presentation, and he said that we cannot really take Chipotle to India because of the pricing thing. And I come from Mumbai. And I've seen people easily spend 400 to 500 rupees on lunch. Yeah. And if we serve chipotle, it's it's going to be a proper meal. It's not like you're missing out on rice or you're missing out on vegetable. You're getting a complete meal that you have at home. And only for 400 rupees, if a person is earning like one lakh per month, they can easily spend 400 for lunch. Which makes up like, the meal sense. Like, so not every For my opinion, yeah. because like rising like, food also helps. Close to at least, close yes. to at least, yeah. What, what you said makes yeah. very absolute sense actually. Close to at least 50% of the middle yeah. class which we are talking about, 350 million people, easily earn uh, uh, 100,000. One lakh is 100,000. Uh, per month. So it's definitely a good proposition. What we were thinking was about we'll have we'll have a place as a niche kind of a product and also have a kind of a dollar menu or something of that right. sort so that we kind of get the volumes as well as we Yeah, I guess subway can work. If Starbucks can work don't get into that. <laughs> <laughs> if, all, if all the raw materials are from India, it's probably much cheaper. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Don't have to choose the price. Makes a lot of sense. No questions, right? Yeah. Oh, Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. Do you have questions? Okay. Um, I guess my first question is this seems like a good fit. Why hasn't this happened already? Well, yes, reason number one what? Is, is the is the uh, the philosophy behind the Chipotle is not a franchise. That's what I was going to ask you too. Yes. So it's not a franchise. It's they it's own not everything. A franchise. They own it. But, All of the but they have of gone to. Uh, uh, it me, I, it's kind of a blend. It's not a fast food. It's not a restaurant. It's right. But it looks like. I, I didn't see all the countries, but it looks like all Western countries so far. Yeah, the Western experience in London was not that good, not that great actually. So uh, in UK, people are not ready to spend more than anything more than five pounds for a lunch. So that was one of the one of the cases. So there's a so it's price. Yes, it's price which was uh, in UK. In Canada, it has been a huge success. Okay. And um, in addition to that, in India, if they enter, they'll have to go for a joint venture because it's like it's a higher, it's a higher brand, and they just can't go and 
uh, take hundred percent risk. Like even when startups, then when they came to India, they had that, they have a collaboration with Tata, and they are actually not selling the coffee that they sell in US. They actually are selling Tata coffee over there. But the brand name that they are using is Starbucks. So maybe if Chipotle wants to go for a joint venture, they might plan come to plan to come to okay, India, but so not as a. So they, they almost have to go joint venture, and maybe they don't want to do that. Yeah, they don't. Okay. Um, the uh, the food itself could the food be replicated in India? So with with local growers. Yes. But I mean, is it, I I just don't know. Is it the same kind of so the barrier is the same kind of tomato, or is it going to be something different? Exactly. So the entry barriers, what you're talking about, is very, very valid point. No, but I'm just asking. I'm just trying to understand. Absolutely. Uh, you know, that is one, one kind of risk, actually. Very important risk. You know, if, if you ask any any Indian mom or, you know, somebody, can you make a, can you make a burrito at home? I can. You can. You see? <laughs> right? Can you make a taco? You can. At, at home, right? It's kind of... You know, it's yeah, not so, that... So what, easy barrier, what's going right? to be the what's going to be the, the difference that's going to draw somebody? Else? It's pretty much similar to pretty much similar to Starbucks. It's the reputation which goes. And so it's just the idea of a Western. Yes, just the idea of the Western. Not just the idea of the Western, but also the craze of Western and and, uh, and the ease of all of this delivery. If you have to get the same product out somewhere, out somewhere else, it's going to be messy. The process that these guys follow. Listen now, this may be a funny question, but are there a lot of local Mexican restaurants in India? No. There are Mexican restaurants, but they are not like local restaurants. Like people who want to really spend little extra on the food and have a quality food. I mean, oh, for, for okay. so dinner, it's, it's they would go to, end, it's a higher end thing. I see. I think one I, reason... I, I've wondered about this in the past, is it, um, the food-wise, it seems to be a, a good fit. Yes, yes. Food-wise, it definitely seems like a good fit. Actually, the thought process to select this idea was exactly that. Why don't we have it support like And... Yeah. Uh, would you try to do anything with Indians who have uh, already tried it here? Would you would there be some sort of? Do you think that that would appeal? So, like people who came here, maybe studied here, and then went back and have tried Chipotle uh, here. Will there be enough of them? Will there be any interest in Absolutely. like like in other words like Starbucks? Oh yeah, Starbucks. Yeah. Might that be some some way to appeal? Absolutely, absolutely. See, uh, if I have to, people who are familiar in eating it here, would they then be interested in it back in India? Yeah, I think if they are in India and they are already aware about Chipotle, I think definitely they would be. Right. And so is there a way to, to sort of market to them? Yes. No, I think it is opposite because uh, I think it is opposite actually because I am coming from South Indian background. The only best thing that I can connect with here is Chipotle. But if I go back, if you put there, I have so many other alternatives. I mean, it is not my first choice. Agreed. But here in United States, that is my first choice. I but if you go back... Uh, in, I agree to both of your points. From your, from that's not your my first choice. It's an alternative. Yeah, it's an alternative. So, you know, where do we really position this is what is the most important thing which we need to consider. Mm -hmm. Professor, your question, the consideration what we have here now is in metros, in metropolitan areas, where you have the maximum number of people who have visited other countries. Various countries. Other countries, and you have technology areas and technology centers in all of these. Even if you have some outlets in, in the center point of those technology, you know, centers and all of that, It'll be a huge hit. I'll give you a best example. Like when I was in India, I just came in May, right? I was in India and I have tried Starbucks wow. when I was in US earlier. For me, going to Starbucks in US was easy. I would not think going 
to Starbucks like should I go or should I not go I'll be spending a lot of money but when I was in India I never went to Starbucks because when I knew it was very costly spending 900 rupees on one cup of coffee was worth the right every I can't go every day over there so it's like when you are in India, when you are going to Shimbuti, you only go on an on an occasion. Maybe you are celebrating your birthday or your anniversary, you will go there. But you will not go to Shimbuti every day because you have, like he said, lot of alternatives which will be similar to Indian food. You have rice and all those things. So that is why we are planning to take Shimbuti to India as a not as a local brand but as a higher brand. I, she has a question. I just have a thought on his question. Um, I agree that we have our local food or we have our own desi food to eat and we have more options there. But wouldn't you go to uh, Chinese for a change? For change, but... Uh, exactly. And, and a lot of them go for Chinese mm -hmm. as an option. Yeah, so why not? That's, that's the positioning which we have. We have a niche positioning. Mm. Not everyday uh, meal or uh, everyday, you know, what we call messes yeah. <laughs> in our place. Right? It's not that segment which we are targeting, it's a niche segment which we are targeting. Good job. Same. Yeah, I think a couple of uh, guys from back had questions. Any questions? <laughs> Would you actually have to import any of the food, or could it all be grown? Grown locally. I think guacamole, our avocados is not uh, not very easily available in India. It's now there in India, but not easily available. So I think that is one major ingredient in my time. Sabi is there, but avocados. We we have like a. Avocados, okay, they have to come from so other part, you will not find avocados so easily. It's, it is a little costlier in India right now. As but you don't have to like import, you just, you just can't import locally. Yeah, yeah, you can just import yeah. the seed and start cultivating it. Yeah, but that is the only thing that I could think of. First. You know, I just try to understand if there's any ingredients. Ingredients. I don't know if you said for Okay, um, let me ask the sort of traditional question here. As you were putting your, together your research, what was the most surprising, shocking, outstanding, curious, amazing, frightening, enlightening thing that you came up with? What stands out to you? One point which I was talking about, why is it not in India? Was, was the biggest point which drove, to, drove us to this topic. That's one surprising thing, which I would say, which we were trying to research and find out. You know, that's one thing, and uh, and probably the second thing would be, um, how do we uh, really make this a success? Because nobody has really, probably people have, a lot of people have thought about it. You know, again, being a skeptical sort of uh, perspective, which I, people might have thought about it and they have refrained from going in there for some of the other reasons or whatever, you know, maybe political reasons or legal reasons, which is joint venture again, which we talked about. So those are the things which, which should get clear. Uh, and, and then, it's not it's not just a brand which these guys manage. They manage the restaurants as well. The business model is completely different. Rather than when you compare a McDonald's or a, or a KFC or a Taco Bell, you know, that's not, not thing. Okay. Yeah. Actually, what I found about Chipotle as a company is they are very environmental friendly. All the ingredients that they use, okay. they make sure that the animal that they are using for chicken is is they are, they are grown in farms, they are taken care of in farms very very nicely in a friendly manner, right? So they are friendly farmers. Then uh, there are many things like they use that, recycled that, papers even for the burrito bowl. Is that doable in India? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's definitely doable so, in India. And second thing I came to know about was fast food concept, like fast food category. What's given on the Chip on Chipotle's website is like when they came up in 1993, there was no category where Chipotle would fit as a food service restaurant. So later on, there was a category built up, which is known as fast food category, and we only have two of them right now as per Wikipedia, and that is Chipotle and Pizza Hut, which comes under fast food category. It's like it's like not even fast casual. It's a different category. That's what they mentioned on there, and even on Chipotle's website, that it's a different category which was started up only because of the kind of service they give. Would the environmental side of it, would that be attractive in India or people wouldn't care? Wouldn't care. 
Yeah. <laughs> so actually, environmental yeah. is kind of a secondary thing because of the population pressure, or, you know, whatever. I I I say yeah. I just just check. Yeah, that would not actually uh, help us making a difference in India. That since we are an environmental friendly company, come and <coughs> but then there is a, there is a growing uh, yes, growing interest in not organic food. Yes. There is a growing yes. interest in uh, health and all that stuff in India right now. So the niche segment which 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 we can really target are would be very very much interested in environmental friendliness of you know organic and comment there or yeah. Yeah. all right very good